I know that I said I was gonna make one and things have been so and just crazier and crazier every day this is something that I I don't think yeah none of us were ready for and so I really do realize though that God works in ways that are so far beyond human understanding and our own that I'm just giving him to God be the glory through this whole thing. You know, how do we manage our mental health through this situation? This is something that's unprecedented, meaning it hasn't really happened before. It has a long time ago, but not in anywhere near our lifetime. How is everybody doing like with the quarantine? You know, dealing with this OCD that we experience through this type of situation, I can't imagine is gonna make the situation easier for anyone. In fact, I feel like being stuck in your house for weeks and weeks and weeks or just being able to go a few places might make it harder to continue to recover and continue to be on the spiral upward, moving down the path of recovery. I think it's really simple right now to be feeling like we're stuck in a rut and we're alone with ourselves. We there are less distractions, there's less and less and less going on. And so for people with mental illness though, that can really become a more odd and uncomfortable atmosphere, like something that we're not ready for yet. Because a lot of times when we're going through this OCD, we're used to having those escapes, the going up to the restaurants with our friends and going to the movies, but all of these places are now closed. And so we don't have that anymore. There is not that normal everyday life activities that I know helped me a lot through recovery. And so back in 2014, if this happened, if this pandemic hit in 2014 when I was going through the initial pure OCD symptoms, I'm not sure if I would have recovered as well as I did. And so I've really felt a huge uh, push on my heart from God, I believe, to address this situation sooner than later and to be here for you guys and to stay connected because community um, talking and expressing ourselves and staying vibrant, keeping our spirits up during this time is so incredibly important um, through all of time, but especially right now. I can't even express that more. So what I have found through this is that there's going to be moments where perhaps we're exasperated or we feel like we're going backwards or our symptoms are springing back up in ways that we thought we had under we had taken under control. We can feel as though that our efforts are kind of being undermined by this. But I want to say something. I want to give you guys some hope. A really good message here. Because this is such a unique time and I posted... Um, my spiritual emphasis on this in the in the previous video I uploaded called urgent spiritual message 2020 so watch that that's very important it's a good place to start because I know that God is speaking to us through this event I know that this is a warning in some way but not one that is supposed to weaken us or make us fall in any way but instead to cling to new strength and to find and to discover a new realm of life that is constantly plastered down and veiled by the secularity of the world and just by the things of the world, the media, news, movies, sports, entertainment, that really consumes us. Our, our jobs do, everything does. And I, I think God stopped all of this so that we would look up and we would take a chance and at least become more comfortable with ourselves and that is something that we have to realize through this OCD, through anxiety and mental health. So what I'm trying to say is that, you know, 
in a more psychological stance that it's going to feel uncomfortable for the first couple of days. It's going to feel weird to be alone with yourself or even just at home not being able to do the things that you normally would be doing and that would help you stay afloat through this. So now we're left with no choice. We have to be our own best friend right now, other than God. And that is something that we've had, we used to have before this. So I know that when I went through my mental illness, having the worst of the intrusive thoughts, the ruminations, the obsessions, um, the ticks and all the triggers and just constantly being concerned about my own will, my own heart and where I was headed. Not to mention the development thereafter, kind of as I was going through that, the somatic OCD hit. So that can be even more debilitating, especially now because those normal um, reliefs are not there, like I said. So now it's going to be hard and we're going to be thrown into this. So. This is not ideal, but that's not even, that doesn't even matter. We have no power over this. So we have to realize and accept, acceptance right now is so important. Accepting the situation, realizing that it's not a death sentence. If we stay home and we listen to the measures being taken, we cooperate together. But more importantly, that you have a heightened sense of self-love and self-awareness right now. Compassion upon your body, compassion upon the state that we're in, we might feel kind of fragile right now, but guess what? This is going to speed up ultimately our recovery. I think if we play our cards right in this and we stick together, we listen, hear each other out and face our fears now that are within us somewhere that are bogus, that are egotistonic, that are not as we think they are. And what I'm trying to say is that when we go through the recovery, when we're doing the ERP and we are understanding all of this and the symptoms are still floating around some caveats like well there's this one thing that is still really bugging me that that is i can just brush under the rug um and not face and it's normally like let me just put this on set it's normally gone because i'm always doing something now it's going to be there perhaps now it might spring up and there's really no choice but to address it but so this is good because Remember that there is nothing to fear within ourselves. There's nothing to fear. Fear itself is bondage to a lie and illusion, a pain and suffering that does not have, doesn't have control over us really, but instead lack of an awareness to tackle these things in us and to become whole altogether, not 99%, but 100. Now that when you're at home and when you're going through this OCD, Find a solace, find a moment, something, it could be anything. Meditation, prayer, reading God's word, drawing, writing, like I have my glitter markers, I've got, well it's behind this, but I have a sketch pad. Do that with yourself, so give yourself something to do, but then now, because we have these underlying things in us, those outliers, those outlying obsessions and moments that we do still somewhat fear or we somewhat are just in complacency with, now is the time more than ever to address and face those and to accept that they are going to feel uncomfortable and they might be more uncomfortable than others because they're more deeply rooted but now is the time to realize that we have to be right there with it and confront it so in those moments that you're doing something that you love take a second to or more to bring forth that one thing and to bring it into the front of your mind and to fully and wholeheartedly accept that it appears to be a way that we do not like, but in the deep, deep truth and root of the truth of what it is, is harmless, is egotistonic, and is really manifested by our fight or flight response. It takes a while to understand that, but that is absolutely the truth because our fight or flight response, and I want to give you guys like a reminder about what is causing our obsessions, about what's causing our just irrationality and all of the symptoms that we're experiencing is due to an overactive, trigger happy, flying off the handle fight or flight response that is truly coming from our sympathetic nervous system. And I'm not a scientist or you know, a psychiatrist or psychologist, but I have done a lot of research on these parts of ourself 
that can cause us hell. It's very important to be here and to realize these things and to be charged up. And I really want to pour into you guys right now because this is an opportunity, I said, to really make a breakthrough in recovery. This does not have to be a downside, an even more hardened or a hardship in a trial. It is for what it is what it is, of course. You're going to have anxiety over what's going on. That is a given. That's probably to be expected and almost a good thing, having empathy and compassion for the people who are suffering from this. That's one thing. But now dealing with the our mental health aspect, since you know, this is completely different than that. So now facing that in the front line is the way we have to go. Either way, even if this did not happen in the world, we still, you still, and I still, and anybody going through this would still have to walk into that fear one day in their mind. Or worse, it could come up in a time we're not expecting it and have a relapse or something, which is pretty rare, I think. But if the longer and longer we don't address every part, every corner of our mind and to shed light onto everything and to nurture and to appreciate every part and to decipher and to realize and accept for what it really is. If we don't do all that, it can, like I said, it can come up in moments that are much more inopportune than this one. So hear me out. And what is very important now to do with those things, those moments, those uncomfortable thoughts, those uncomfortable sensations, is to realize in your heart and soul, because our minds might not be totally clicking and rational and able to agree, but this is the truth. And it's extremely important to think from your heart and to really, really, like I've said so many times, and to accept it in a part of yourself that is within your consciousness and your your soul. And it's it takes a unique amount of time and a different path in everyone to find that. So I can't exactly explain that, but I know it's there. I have found it. And it's within all of us. It's like a different part of ourself that's not in these biological and chemical phenomena within us. When we think from that part of ourself and we then therefore address and analyze the truth that these other parts of ourself and our brain that feels foreign, that feels scary, that's not, it's egotistonic, opposite of our ego, like what we think and want, opposite of our will, opposite of where we are headed in our life and who we are. When we think from the that safe and good and pure place in us that doesn't change, symptoms This disorder comes from solely the survival instinct. Cortisol in our brain, not serotonin, not the other ones, and I don't know all of them, but I know that that is what I was experiencing years ago, and initially when I made that first video, and I quickly realized that this system in our body, when it's thrown out of whack, when it's giving us a hard time, it can give us a very very scary time a one that is stronger and more realistic and more erratic and really really persistent than we'd ever really realize or want or could have ever worried or dreamed that would become so we're found ourselves when we don't know this we find ourselves in a debilitating state because we don't know that this is this is like a part of ourself but it has no in no way shape or form truly to who we are but it's flying off the handle and it doesn't know any better. So it's super important, it's imperative to understand that that part of ourself, the survival instinct, the sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight response, all the same thing, is the control center for our obsessions, our ruminations, the chain on our mind to the particular part of our body or part of our mind that can think about these certain things and these worries, these awarenesses, and the doomsday thoughts, all of that, all of these chains are linked to the fight or flight response. And it's all like a show that this system is putting on in our body. And it really, really is hitting, it hits us very hard in this and it can seem so convincing. And so we have to basically pull that plug and from that safe place in our heart and where we, who we know we are and basically it's like we're giving it an anecdote. We're not like attacking it because we already know that forcing these things out doesn't work. Um, you know, any of that forcing this, the ritualizing rituals don't do anything good. 
And so it's super critical to instead accept this truth, do whatever you need to, to understand it and let it sink deep into your heart and your soul, and then to therefore eliminate our responses that would otherwise be needed without this knowledge to these manifestations of the fight or flight response that is trying to attack and trying to address these imaginary issues and worries that are completely irrational, but it doesn't know any better. So that is what ERP does. And I know I still have a lot of research to do on ERP, but I know that is very, very powerful. And by draining that fuel that we give our fight or flight response that initially happened when we first went through this, and it truly really fired it up and it basically knocked that part of ourself onto an ill track and it's it's this like this ill train that's just speeding 150 miles an hour down this track that leads nowhere it leads nowhere and that's why we feel like we're in hell when we're going through this because it doesn't go anywhere it's endless it's an endless worry that's never going to be solved so we have to tell it to stop we have to communicate with that part of ourself so now through this pandemic Stay focused on those things and realize this truth and practice more than ever to be alone with yourself. Take the time to be in uncom those uncomfortable moments and face that. That's a really good ERP, very, very good um, exposure response prevention. I always mix it up, I'm really sorry. But um, it's exposing and eliminating our response. So um, this is now the time to expose ourselves to these things because I think this whole thing is putting into perspective our false worries and, you know, our body parts, our heartbeat, our breathing, our blinking, whatever it could be. None of that is something that is genuinely a worry. And even if we are, like I said, it's the fight or flight response that's holding it there, that's chaining it there, that can be slashed with these exercises and with time and with medication and definitely spiritual nourishment as well and rather not truly it's not a genuine worry so now is the time definitely and it's to try these things out when we're when we are alone because when we're crutching on other things and when we are avoiding when we're needing others constantly that is ultimately not doing us a favor and it's easy to go that route but now is the time to take the route that we have to face the harder one on our own but with each other with community so that's why i'm making this video i want to encourage you guys very much to start to do those things that you haven't done if you haven't felt yourself blossom out of this and fully back into your healthy state of life um, and full functioning and being able to be at the point of habit reversal or reversing these habits being able to think back into these things and not have a trigger not suddenly be worried because the, the truth is, is that you have to be able to be at a point where you can talk about your blinking talk about your breathing talk about those scary thoughts talk about these sensations and these these obsessions without being triggered and without being back to square one so that is the goal, is to be resilient and to be able to not genuinely eliminate that fear and to believe this truth. Because it's easy to say you do and to do these things, but then to still have that, well, I don't know, like it still freaks me out, the core. So now it's time to get to that core, find it and pull that root out. This is the time. And so it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be super easy, but it is the best thing you can do for yourself going through this kind of thing with mental health. And I am praying for every single one of you because I know that this is not the oppor most opportune time, but it's still not the worst it can be. And I think by taking care of ourselves and nourishing ourselves in this way, it will be able to better prepare us to take care of others, to help out and address things that are that are finally, you know, just not, doesn't have to do with us. I think we all are a little exhausted trying to, all, you know, always thinking about ourselves and worrying about ourselves. And so it's like Scooby-Doo, you know? Like it's by pulling the mask off and be like, who is this Scooby-Doo? Like, who is this really? Oh, nothing's there. Like, wow, the whole time there was nobody under that mask. It's just me. And it really makes you be like, it's a mind boggling thing. And it happened for me 
many a year ago at least a couple years ago and every day you know it still kind of does and it just as amazes me how we can be our own worst enemy and our own best friend at the same time but we can move completely into that realm of light within us and to be wholesome confident strong and to have endurance through adversity and resiliency um so and last but not least this whole look at what's going on in the world and take a second to absorb all of these things and to be grateful for your life be grateful for your health your body your age whatever you've got going on just be thank god for it because we could have not been created we could have never existed we could have never had a life and by golly we do and it's so incredible even when it's difficult and not very fun um this whole event is putting everything into a great, great perspective, I think, and helping bring out godliness and selflessness and so much more from people and exposing the truth about our governments and just things that we're not doing well. And it's really just bringing a lot of things to light that needed to be. And so now let this bring to light in you the last remaining parts, or perhaps maybe just beginning to address these systems, these parts of ourselves that are broken, that for very on varying degrees but need to be loved nurtured and taken care of it wants you to because it can't do it on its own so there are lesser parts of ourselves that the higher parts i don't know how else to say it need to like you know put your cast back under your wing because they're trying to shun a part of ourself is never ever ever going to be healthy we need to be we can yeah, we can work on parts of ourselves, reject things and say, you know, bad habits, desires, temptations, all of that's very good, self-discipline. But when it comes to this, this is a, it's not normal, it's not healthy, and it's not true. So the good news is, is that it is remediatable. It's not a word. There is a remedy for this, 100%. It's very unusual. It takes an uncommon sense, but this is the time to explore ourselves with love and with acceptance and not being afraid and so like how are you guys doing how is everything going what are you guys doing to stay afloat through this what's your favorite um you know anxiety relieving habit right now what are you guys doing to keep yourself sane keep yourselves going um let's share tips let's share some comments share what you're doing to keep yourself afloat and so much more than that and so i highly recommend doing some reading this is the time to dive into some books gain some new knowledge some new insight and wisdom and to not ruminate and obsess over the news and what's going on be aware but don't dwell dwell in our in positivity and so many other better things and you know take action upon yourself and others and one other thing that i want to mention as well is to definitely at this time look into telehealth prompting signals out there from your doctors, from your therapists and your hospitals and networks because this is the time to get familiar with that since it's our only option right now really. And definitely don't be afraid to reach out and to go in if you need to. Like if you can somewhere, reach out to your friends and family, make sure to stay connected physically as well if you can, but definitely at least like on FaceTime or something and to set a routine so that as well and like i said to do those activities that are mindful and hands-on but also to get yourself into a daily routine of taking care of yourself in a way that is not just with mental health but also physically and vocationally and financially and so at this point we we need all of those things to continue to go well and to get some sort of sense of normalcy and structure well, I still work for the post office so I still have to go to work I'm not exactly able to just not go there hasn't been an outbreak at my post office yet or anything in the city of Duluth where I live up in Minnesota we only have like 10 cases so we're very lucky here for now um, so I'm still pretty busy but I have more days off I have Sundays off now I've got another I don't have to do mandatory overtime so I'm able to make more videos and I'm so glad for that so again totally let me know what you guys are doing down in the comments below and uh i'll put as many resources as i can in this video down below for you guys to click and to look into 
um, anything that you guys were wondering, perhaps, because there's so many things that are now coming to the the front line, front of our minds from this, right, has new attention and new light shed on it. So expect more content, hit that alert button, hit subscribe, but most importantly, take very, very much well care of yourself and realize that you're precious, we're unique, we're made in the image of God, there's so much more I can tell you, and I'm gonna eventually. So God bless you guys, and let me know your thoughts on all of this.